everybody your experiences fishing Baja, Mexico, when you cross the border, what's the feeling you have? Not, I'm leaving all the BS behind. Roger that. That as soon as we cross the Roger border, that. the fun begins. Dig it. <laughs> no <laughs> sense of fear. It's always fun. Yep. Always fun. And you got a really cool thing going on. We need to link up with her and get some. Yeah. Fish. I'm doing it. Diego Nuno and Ensenada. How do you like it? It's the best. I mean, Diego knows that place like the back of his hand. Some, some, if we didn't catch fish when we went with him, it would be bitching just from the geography we're seeing. Yes. The absolutely. land, the landscape oh, and everything. Sasha Puedes, you get north of the Ensenada. That's, it's yeah, so yeah. bitching, man. Bill, but, their first trip. So I took them for their first trip. You can hang on just one more yeah. second. And we went to Palmas de Cortez. We mm-hmm. drove down there. And nice. we had like nine people in the car, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We had a whole. And we were in a trip. big suburban. No, 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 I'm fine. I'm fine. We had a whole. You great know, trip. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. Great. Try the Baja. Who likes to fish more in Mexico than here? Why? Uh, it's Stop the it. fishing oh, so much better. It's an experience. It's an adventure. Yes. It's always always something fun. Yep. Funny happens. I I don't know if it's us. <laughs> nah, maybe. It's Mexican but waters. <laughs> I don't know. From from we the, made that we made that crossing, you know, from Guerrero mm-hmm. across the Vizcaino yeah. Desert, and then you see the Sea of Cortez, it's and I kept, I kept saying, it's, crazy "It's magical, you guys. Wait it till is. you see this." And it was. Oh yeah, it was so mad. And then we get there, and I go, "You guys, you're gonna probably catch a marlin." Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Oh no, you know, they were young." We, Bill, we went out with Jose and Jose. We had so many marlin in the first hour. They're like. Can we do something else? <laughs> and I'm like, you little, you know, I wanted to punch him. We must have had like 20 marlins. So yeah. It was then, stupid. Yeah. Then we go into the beach. We're catching roosters, yellowfin mm-hmm. tuna. Patrick throws a sardine to catch another yellowfin and swings and a marlin jumps. I go, yeah. you hooked another marlin. <laughs> wow. It was, you still remember that, right? Uh, it's just, How do you forget that? You can't. No. You can't. It's you know, bitching. As a Mexican, I love to hear American people. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So good about Mexico. Of course. I love it. I always say, Phil, you are amazing, uh, gringo, pro Mexico. Yeah. And I can tell Bill, too. Yeah, Bill, so Bill's cool. insane about it, too. Yeah. yeah. You can't, we're not lying, though. It's 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 the experiences we carry. If we had bad experiences there, we wouldn't be talking about That's it. That's right. It's, it's true, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I love it. Mexico, woo. Yeah. Crazy right. stories. I got some funny other ones too, but I don't, I don't know yeah, if you want me to tell them. I don't care. Go ahead. Oh, you want to do the snake story or something? There's or the snake story. Go There's... ahead. Tell them another one. Uh, God, this was what back when you were uh, your old business partner, Terrence Berg, had the biggest fear of snakes. We were driving down the road. We're probably an hour and a half away, and we see a dead snake on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. I go, "Hey, let's get that, and we'll stick it in Terrence's bed. It'll be hilarious." <laughs> so I get out. I take my brother's brand new fly rod. I pick the snake up by the tail and I stick that under its head, and I sit back in the suburban. I got it sitting in my lap. He's oh, go, he so drives. Cold. His cruise speed is about ninety miles an hour. <laughs> I used to drive that suburban. I go, let's see what what it takes to shut it off. What was it? One hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going about ninety down the highway. I've got this snake in my lap, and the next thing I know, this thing slithers up my leg and it sticks its head looking at me, and I start screaming. It's alive! It's alive! And I'm, I'm going, what do I... And like, he's swerving all over the damn road. The window's open. I throw the fly rod and the snake out the window. Never saw either of them again. <laughs> we went back and licked all over hell for that fly rod. Couldn't find it. Yeah. That was too funny. Probably yeah. flew away. <laughs> yeah. <Fly rod>. yeah. <laughs> wow. I love corny jokes like that. That's really corny. You tell, the hot, you tell the hot peanut story. Oh, well, these more and maniacs. Uh, you know, we're in Ciudad Constitución. Okay. And we just stopped and we're at a liquor store. And I go, please get me some picante peanuts. Yeah. I want some peanuts. Yeah, yeah. So these guys go in. He's and driving, they... so he's have us picking the peanuts out for him. But what we did was we picked uh-huh. every chili out and stuck it in his hand. So he ate a handful of just straight chilies. Wow. And it's like a Sunday morning oh. at like 8 a.m. There's oh. families going to church. Oh. Yeah, I'm throwing up out the out window. The window. Oh, and they just yes. think he's just some drunk <laughs> gringo. And, yeah, the <laughs> poor Mexican family oh. with the kids and everything going to the La Misa, going to Mass. They're looking like... Bill, you know, it is a trouble. It is problems in Mexico. Those guys. Yeah. Those guys making yeah. troubles in Mexico. Though that's the most dangerous Mexico. part. Well, yeah. we're screwing with each other. We don't really get anybody else Absolutely. involved. But we got it, it, there's so many memories we can go down yeah. and, and uh, just the fun riding quads on the beach with your of surf course. rods in tow, man, and you're looking for breezing uh, mm-hmm. uh, roosters. It's 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 a bitch in place. Magical. Magical. Well, you know, we all have uh, these Baja stories could go on and on for, for, for years. But we were filming um, the uh, Baja series, 
and we were, gonna, we were on our way home. So we'd been down in Baja for like six weeks, and we're in San Jose del Cabo, and we had done a couple of shows there, um, and we, this, this, the one captain wanted to put his kid in the show. So I said, tell you what, why don't we have him carry our gear down to the boat? We'll get him in the show, him handing us our gear, right? This, this nine-year-old, 10-year-old mixed kid, you know, really cute little guy, you know, just like and totally into it. So we do that, and as we're leaving San Jose del Cabo, we're going to go to Loreto, Loreto, L.A. Bay, L.A. Bay across the border. You know, we're done. We're done filming. So uh, we're leaving San Jose del Cabo, and I go, you know what? There's a fish cleaning facility at the Pongero, the little Pongero yeah, yeah. Uh, marina yeah. in San Jose del Cabo. I've been all over the world. There's no place I've ever seen that has a place that nice for filleting your fish. It's not just one table with a shade. There's like seven tables with macerators. It's all palapid, all cement. It's unbelievable. I said, I want to feature this. It might be a 30 second part of the show. I want to feature because I've never seen like this in my life. So we pull into that place. And there's one old Mexican guy filleting some fish, right? And I asked, hey, pardon, pardon, uh, permiso para, you know, filme, para, you know, para uh, programme, uh, pescaderos, you know, bah, I mean, I'm just butchering the language. <laughs> this guy loves it. Oh, I know. And I go, can I just film you filleting this fish? Yeah, yeah, no problem. You know, so he's filleting this beautiful, like, you know, 12 pound leopard grouper. Does a beautiful job as y'all do, you know, been doing this stuff for years. You could have been blindfolded on him. He's done with it, and he hands me these fillets. Hmm. I'm going, no, 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 no. That is No, gracias, no, no. Yeah, para, right? para su familia, that you know, no necesario para mí, you know. He's all, no. And they are, yeah, of course. I go, no, 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 you don't get it. We're all good, bro. This is for you and your family, but thank you very much. You did a beautiful job, and talk to you later. He goes, no. He puts it in a bag, and he, he insists that we're taking these, this beautiful. And you take it. Who doesn't like grouper, right? <laughs> right, right. Especially leopard grouper. That stuff's like candy. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll take it. We're out of here. Gracias, amigo. Yeah, thank you for you. We're driving out, and that eight-year-old kid is on the side of the road because he knew we were leaving. He's like, stop, stop. And there's a big brown paper bag at his feet. So we stop and go, hey, what up? He goes, for you, mangoes. Because June oh, wow. in San Jose de Cabo is mango, mango uh, harvest. Yeah. Go he on. gives these beautiful mangoes. And we love mango margaritas at the tail hunter. You know? yeah, yeah. John and Julie make the best mango margaritas. We're not stopping at La Paz. We're going to Loreto. And there's this one restaurant we wanted to get to in time to take that grouper and those mangoes, have mango margaritas and wow. grouper dinner. So we're going up the highway, you know, and it's getting a little late. It's like 8 o'clock. Oh, Don, it's like 9 o'clock. We pull into Loreto. We go right to that restaurant. We pull right up in the boat in the truck, park on the opposite side of the road. You know, it's like, yeah. who gives a shit? Right. We're here, you know? <laughs> we pull up, and here's the owner of the restaurant and his two employees locking the place up and leaving. And we're like, we just drove eight hours <laughs> towing that boat on that highway. <laughs> you know, all I want to do is drink mango margaritas and yeah. eat this fish. I'm so bummed, right? And I go, oh, my God, I'm so, ah, oh, you guys are closed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I told him, you know, we drove eight hours from San Jose del Cabo. We got these mangoes, we got this fish. We came here just for your restaurant. But we understand. Is there any other restaurant in town that you suggest we could take this fish to? I know. And he turns to his employees. <laughs> Do you know what happened? Do you know what happened? He looks lot. at us. On, he up. unlocks that door. He walks us back in there. And he goes, come on, I'll cook that for you. I said, listen, listen, this is incredible. Nobody in the United States would ever reopen their Hell restaurant no. for three gringos with yeah. some fish and some mangoes. <laughs> yeah. I said, here's what's going to happen. They died on 911 in America. <laughs> Roger <laughs> that. <laughs> I said, here's what we're going to do. If you're going to do this for us, here's what we're going to do for you. You will be joining us with these mango margaritas. You will be joining us with this fish dinner. So let's make this a party. We go in. He cooks it three different ways, right? So typical. Yeah. And then uh, they all were just having these mango margaritas, blah, 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 at the end of it. You know, oh, yeah. I just go, oh, that was phenomenal. Quanto, amigo, quanto. How much? He goes, he looks. Mm, $30? $10 each. We're like, no. We gave him 60 wow. It's like, are you serious? There's no way. It's 60 was a banging deal. He was stoked. The guys was, we all had eaten. Had no. That would never happen in the United States. That's When people tell me, why do you love Mexico? Stories like that are why you love right. Mexico. I'll go to my grave with that story. Exactly. The people there are so kind. And so, I mean, like you said, you're not going to find that here. People are like three weirdos that show up with a bag of mangoes yeah. and some fish. I'm yeah. dialing 911. Check it out. So my two crew... They were from Toronto. They were Canadians. Ooh, wow. And I told them, I go, before we start this, because they were a little worried, just like you said. 
their family's going, you're going to Mexico? You're going to be, how long have you been down there? Like six weeks. What? Six weeks in Mexico? You're like, by car? Mm -hmm. How does Bill really know this place? Blah blah blah. They were all you know, they the wanted to double the life insurance and everything, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I told him, I go before we before we cross the border. I said, I'll tell you guys right now. This experience for the next six weeks, it's gonna f up your life. <laughs> and they what left. do you mean? I go, yeah. When you come down there for six weeks and you realize how amazing it is. You're going to want to live in Mexico. Yeah. You ain't going to want to live in the cold of Toronto. This is going to F up your life. <laughs> and they... <laughs> Dude, we're and coming, that happened? We get north, there's some, we're getting to the border to go north. I don't want to go home. I don't want to go back to Toronto. I don't want to go back to LA. I mean, it literally messed up their life. And guess what? One of my camera guys, he lives in Cabo now. Wow. He's got a girlfriend. He's got a charter business. He freaking lives in Cabo. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, Daryl Van Slack. Daryl, if you're watching, bro, hook it up. Daryl. Yeah. Oh, he's really good.